this monk he has. Yeah. We, yes. right. we grace. Namaste. Yeah. Uh, 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 me and Randy Kirit. Yes. Uh, Dear friends, as we have been meditating and in many ways meditation is applied because life is many dimension and many mention it has dimension as well as mention also so mention are the seven level we call it seven level of consciousness and dimension aspect of the life and meditation if it is only for one way then it is, it become rigid and anything become rigid breaks down the trees on the canyon mountain that are standing so one day i was wondering when i was there and their tall trees are standing on the canyon and i say the wind is so strong and still the trees are standing anything can be uprooted with the powerful wind and that that was on the top but from the person who was there working i learned from him that there is the art of bending and standing when there is wind they bend when the wind is over they stand flexibility always one has to be pliable flexible then you are able to stand any challenge in life life is a challenge and anybody who is in happiness or success that time they don't have time to have patience understanding and acceptance so the opportunity of success lies in your difficulties meets that in the midst of difficulty and that is the truth when you are happy everything is going conveniently you have your father's wealth money that time you don't know what is patience how to cope with life people become impatient so you will see the people who are coming from a, a very big family rich family they don't have the touch with the life but those who have grown with the challenge difficulty they know how to have patience how to accept other people and in time of difficulties or challenges that time you bend and anything if you stand and bend then is not going to influence your life to destroy so meditation is one way a art of learning how to stand and how to bend and there are two aspects of life one is the pure clear invisible consciousness another is 
the consciousness is invisible intangible how to get in touch with the intangible and how to have the vision of the invisible so the invisible and intangible can be experienced with the visible and tangible with the matter of the body mind and our structure so there are two aspects that is why we call soul and matter so our life is nothing but combination of soul and matter both are there and as long as one has not reached the state of enlightenment what in the end you call universal consciousness and free from this body so long you have to remain in touch with both each other and manage your life many how you manage you find your opportunity amidst the difficulty difficulty comes instead of being angry or anything happened unpleasant which you don't like being excited angry negative that time take the back seat of meditation and when your thoughts are connecting with that event which is not pleasant which is not in your favor which is against you instead of reacting or upsetting meditate when something unpleasant touches you about to touch you watch yourself how you are reacting and this is the art of living so you are able to understand yourself that in any situation you are able to manage yourself and another person will not manage or govern or manipulate your life and those people who react and don't have meditation become upset become angry become bitter become negative they lose they lose the game because they are allowing that person to control you so this is a one good story when buddha you know the story it is very well known story when devadatta who was against him and devadatta came and he was blaming and making a, a, a target of all bad thing and giving a uh, initiation uh, uh, the renunciation and initiation to his nephew and he started blaming buddha and using harsh word in that time the buddha, buddha disciple ananda was sitting he became angry he became upset and he said, he this devda is insulting my teacher 
Buddha was calm. He tried to make him angry and reactionary, but Buddha was very peaceful. And after 30 or 40 minutes, when Dev Dak was exhausted and it was a heat and summer day and his throat was drying, so immediately Buddha asked Ananda in a bowl, please bring some water and give some water to him. And he could not understand. He was trying to excite Buddha, make also reactionary, and take the blame and answer something instead of doing half an hour he listened. He was watching connection. Each word, each action the person does with you, you have to watch. Something excites you, sometimes sometime become very pleasant. So you have to watch that. All the effort he did, but Buddha was calm. By the end, he offered a bowl of water. And Devdut could not understand this kind of <coughs> hospitality. Hospitality to this person who is using unpleasant word and insulting such a great man. And that man is offering with a smile a bowl of water. So one thing we have to know, when people become upset and when you are upset, the, you say, this person upset me. But if you don't want to be upset, nobody has the power to upset you. That's the big secret. But we have the gun power inside. So somebody tells and it, bum, we are coming. So in reality, that person is not uh, upsetting you. The person is not making you angry. But you are holding the gun power uh, inside. It ignites you. Little bit fire and boom. So the people who become angry immediately and they say, this person upset me, but they are ignorant and not meditator. Anybody try to do anything, but what you want to do, you know, because how you are connecting to that event, watching, and life is the watch. And it's a game, watch, you know, 60, 70, 80 years watch, you, if you watch, you will learn life. You will learn from the person. You will change the person instead of being reacted. So, those people who blame others, the world is a rotten place. People are very bad. They are not meditating. They are not seeing themselves. The world is world. And in the same world, there are people who are living peacefully. And you are becoming upset. Why? Because you have the gunpowder inside. So as soon as you have the little triggers, sparks, you come out. So in a way, meditation, as we have mentioned, is a balcony. Sit comfortably. Take time to make a habit 
to have a time just for yourself, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Understand yourself. And you say, I am in charge of my life. I am in charge of life. And when any occasion comes, in that occasion, I will watch and how to handle it. I, wa I will be in my own power. So my power will not be given to somebody. And this way, this small span of life, that is Abhitraga. Namori Hantanang means you are overcoming your negativity. And negativity become under, and you are swimming above that. And not one way, in many ways it comes. It comes from your own wife, from your own husband, from your own partner, your neighbor, even from your friend, and whom you call my buddy, because people go with the various. So it is a very comfortable place you have to take. Sit and watch whatsoever happening on the floor. The play is happening, so you can watch. But watch before you are watching. So every day, if you take little time, and last time I have talked to you, so this is the message I think I have made some uh, copies, so you can start with that day. day. Every day you start, when the day starts, instead of just taking coffee and tea and taking the New York Times and reading all this gossip and troubles of the world and spoiling your day, Yes, yes. We, we pay money to buy this boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, easy to come, don't come. So, he said, my day, I have to start. So first of all, you, when you get up, you say, this is the beginning of a new day. Because yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is a dream. Today is the beginning. Alive. Because last night we resigned, everything was gone. If we did not get up our bank account, our house, all the car, everything would, would change the name. You are awake and everything is back. If you don't get up from the sleep, gone. So what is yours? What is mine? It is not yours if you are not awake. You are awake, it is there, it is not yours. It is it belongs to the earth, the thing is yours. The problem starts when you say, this is mine. Nothing is yours. Because before I was born, the things were there. When I go, the things will be there. So you are in between. So in a, ray, in a way, you are a friend of the world to use the things with a friendly feeling and with a thanks. Whatsoever you get, you say thank you. Thank you for the day. Thank you for the food. Thank you for whatsoever you get. Go with the thanks. Attitude of gratitude. It will be very appreciative. 
we will feel humble and the people who will be there they will appreciate attitude of gratitude if it, you lose it you say it was not mine it was to go it go out you make effort it is not that you neglect but if it does not come at least you don't spoil your day your peace your relation they are very important thing so the things are there so one of the poet whom i love very much in my life his name is ravindranath tagore who got the nobel prize and gandhi ji used to call him gurudev gandhi ji respected ravindra tagore with great reverence and he was one of the best poet and he got the nobel prize and his uh, nobel prize was given on the book it is called gitanjali it's a small booklet but uh, the poems are so beautiful divine gitanjali name of the book is gitanjali ravindra tagore he addresses the day he addresses to the earth he addresses to his existence in three steps when he opens the eyes and he say oh mother earth i came to your door as a stranger we all came in the world as a stranger we did not know the world the world did not know us we stranger we call father mother we did not know them they did not know us it is some kind of your previous like connection you are connected so the first thing is to address this world the mother earth you say oh mother i came to your door as a stranger then you say i live with thanks as a guest here in your house in a we in really we are guest the earth is giving us the place the trees are giving us the fruit and the air and everything is there the sun is giving light if the sun start giving the electricity bill you will not be able to pay uh, electricity here you use electricity you have the bill but the sun is giving so much light so much solar energy no bill we are guest the people who are host they are giving you freely they take you the fresh air here you have a air condition you have to pay the bill but the fresh air when you walk in the morning as the oxygen comes you take your lungs will open your brain will open your energy will be there and you will full of oxygen so the second thing what we have to see that we have to feel as a guest of this earth and guests should not make any demand they must appreciate i am oh mother earth i am a guest in your and grateful guest i will be and when our time is over 100 year or less or more the time of departure we say 
थैंक यू मदर आई केम टू योर डोर एज ए स्ट्रेंजर लिव एज ए गेस्ट बट नाउ आई एम डिपार्टिंग एंड लिविंग योर होम एज ए फ्रेंड वी लिव द वर्ल्ड विद अ फीलिंग ऑफ फ्रेंडली फीलिंग नो एनिमोसिटी नॉट ब्लेमिंग एनी बॉडी नॉट होल्डिंग एनी ग्रज इन द माइंड एंड क्लीन द माइंड बिकॉज दिस आई इफ यू डोंट डू एनी बैड थिंग यू कीप इन द माइंड यू स्पॉइल यूर होल ऑफ द लाइफ द ह्यूमन लाइफ इज अ वेरी वैल्यूएबल माई फ्रेंड इन दिस होल साइकल ऑफ द यूनिवर्स इफ यू सी मैन इज ऑन द टॉप इफ यू सी द स्मॉल एंट इज ट्राइंग टू लिव how the ant how he is going make it away it is collecting the food for its future you can see the small small flies collecting honey for the living all are striving to live and among them the human being are on the top who have five senses and having all the good things our departure become painful crying negative what we have gained in this life human life what we gain what we are going to take when we go home what will be our earning what will be our gift what we are going to carry with us the lie deception anger hate revenge opinion what will be and how much the mind collects in the whole of the day you can you have to watch our mind is such a beautiful place where the divine presence is living and we fill up with this all small small negative things unpleasant things and they don't go over from our mind unless we have a power of erasing them you watch please watch the uh, longevity of negativity longevity of negativity if somebody praises you 100 times and one times he uses one bad word ke okay, you rascal or you crazy fellow 100 time what we have you will all forget but till the last day you will say this fellow this chitra manu told ke okay, crazy he called me crazy but 100 time i say good word but nothing even the last time the brain retains the negative thing it has a longevity of negativity we have to erase them if we don't erase they make nest in our brain yes it is it is for our good what we are and what is a meditation is to watch what our own mind is doing to our own self how we are hurting with our own way, hand and spoiling our peace and for this body you can think what food we have not taken what what we have not taken people don't understand what they are doing in their life the people wear the fur coat and they were mink coat mink coat 
and if you see the how the mink and a fox are trapped for two to three days and are struggling, they die peacefully. They die with tears, cry, not with the peace for this body, for our comfort. They eat the food which is belong to the animal, to poor animal. We snatch away their food, and the babies cows, the small babies cry and die, and they put in such a place where they suffer for months. So man, without meditation, without awareness. can become a curse for one's own self because what he is doing not to the animal but the vibrations what he is creating that is going to spoil all of his his journey also animal die they suffer but the person who is doing for his selfish ness is going to suffer for a long time so on this earth we are here be friend so three steps we start with the day that oh mother earth i am at your door as a stranger leave as a guest and depart as a friendly friend when we start that so the second thing we have this is the beginning of a new day my good fortune has given me this day to use as i will you have good fortune that is why you got it is not that somebody has favored you you have sown something good that is why you got good parents good country good environment good five senses you have sown so you are receiving it is not given by somebody if god could give he will not be partial to us and impartial to african indian and they are suffering people don't have evening food only 10% of the people are getting three meals a day and we are fortunate so we have to think that here we have to watch that this day is given to me because of not god or somebody has favored you you have done something good fortune you have to continue so it is continuously doing good thing every day you deposit something i have done something before you put your head against the pillow just remember a small thing what you have done today i have done well good word sharing some good thoughts giving up something for our for our need to somebody have shared something and that is why jesus christ when he got a loaf of bread he was not a rich man very simple person and he says i have a loaf i cannot eat alone and that they call last supper supper huh eh? 12 people come on share them even you got the bread you don't eat alone share have little, one bread and a 12 people are sitting you can see how much share comes 
it, it's a Middle East bread, it must be a very big one. So at least, huh? <laughs> sharing is the beautiful. So we see the great people always, they share whatever we have, this is we sharing this. So that, that way we are depositing in this way. So this day is the result of good fortune has given me this day. I will continue the something doing good every day. Day is used as I will. Now you have the willpower. Day is with us, I will use. Now I can waste it or use it for good. You have a choice. You can waste, you can drink, you can smoke, you can go on fishing and there is no. Or you can help, you can give something and care for somebody and give a hand and look, make the world better. The other day I was in a park and so many people were cleaning the garden. So I asked, we are volunteer, uh, we share time to keep this uh, park very clean and uh, up doing so. They were doing service, such good people without any. So I can use it or I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is important, very important thing, because I am exchanging a day of my life for it. It is not coming freely, it, you are making an exchange. Your whole day you are giving in exchange. Where I, I am exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever. Tomorrow this day will be gone. Leaving in its place something that I have traded for it. It does not go. It is going to leave some residue behind. Leaving something in its place that I have traded a day of my life. I want that to be gain and not loss, good and not evil, success and not failure, so that I shall not regret the price I paid for it. We have paid a price of the day. So this is the one prayer or a thought just to have something as a reminder. So you will be able to know the preciousness of the day. And you will be aware when you negatively react to the event and you will find the opportunity for growth amidst the difficulty. You are not blindly jumping to the occasion. Watch. It is a challenge to be simple, to be patient, to be considerate. And instead of being uh, extravagant <laughs> simplicity, so the whole purpose of meditation is to use your awareness and deposit the day. And when the journey is completed, you smile. And if you don't burn your neuron with anger, with hate, with negativity, your neurons are going to work till the last day. And if you know how to breathe very well, 
your neuron will not in the in the doctor some doctor say in the age of 70 after 70 your neuron become uh, depressed and uh, worn out and uh, in disease but if you know how to take every day inhale and when the uh, oxygen goes uh, directly penetrates your neuron and it opens it refreshes it become alive so till the last day your neuron will very fine and i know how the memory become sharper i tell you a few years ago i used to for, forget things now i don't forget my memory become so powerful and many people say how do you remember all the same name or everything i say i, I don't know because i am breathing very well and each time i inhale directly the air goes push to the all neuron they become awake and when you exhale all the carbon dioxide goes away and it is free there is no charge on it so my friend i wanted to see you before i go to india for a season so this is a good thing all you have come and very good thing so i think i, I have some copies so you can you know, Uh, take it or you can make other copies also but uh, send this day and it become very uh, something to remind you and uh, each person as an individual he can make an effort not to keep any gun power inside so other people can trigger the fire and destroy you no no gun power okay. here is a peace peace power is a meditator so meditate uh, is a person who will not hurt oneself and he will not hurt others so i uh, want to thank you all all who have taken this very good uh, time to work and on the 26 i am leaving for india and before go today uh, mamta uh, Uh, the, your friend has come from the um, uh, mercy for animal yes uh, uh, mr. mr matt rice he's in charge of the new york uh, city uh, uh, office the main office is in chicago uh, and uh, uh, the name of the uh, name of it is mercy for animals we have some folders if you haven't picked them up please be sure to do so on the way out and he will be showing uh, a video about 4 or 5 minutes on uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, animal abuse and, and the uh, abuse of uh, the, the cows with the milk we are not aware of what's going on behind our backs <laughs> yes it's incredible because of all the uh, chemicals that they're using Uh, on the animals it 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 really is making our food uh, uh unbearable and that's why with the, the US the we have more diseases than any other country and we're the wealthiest but uh, that's because they're use, overusing the uh, ke- chemicals there's no doubt thanks hi everybody uh, my name is Matt Rice and I'm with Mercy for Animals a national nonprofit animal advocacy organization We're based in uh, Chicago, but we also have an office here in New York. We have an office here on the Upper East Side, and um, Mercy for Animals believes that uh, an- animals are irreplaceable individuals with morally significant interests and hence rights, including the right to live free from unnecessary suffering and exploitation. And so in, uh, we work to make a, so- a society in which all animals are treated with the respect and compassion they so rightly deserve. We focus primarily on farmed animal issues uh, right now because pre- predominantly farmed animals are um, the ones who are suffering the most, the largest number of animals. There's about 27 billion farmed animals who are killed in this country every single year for food, and the ways in which they're suffering are, are extreme. And so as Guru Dev mentioned, the first thing is awareness. 
Uh, so our organization focuses on raising awareness. We do investigations at um, slaughterhouses, at factory farms, and then we try to give that information to people so that they can make informed choices. Uh, here in the city, we do humane education. We go to classrooms, elementary schools, high schools, colleges, and talk to kids about uh, the plights of farmed animals. We also work with restaurants to have them add vegan options to their menu. Um, we staff tables at Earth Day festivals. We print up a lot of brochures. We have a website, mercyforanimals.org, and we also release uh, documentaries. Uh, we released a documentary last year um, called Foul Play. It was uh, it covered our investigations into the egg industry across the United States. We had uh, undercover investigators go to egg farms all across the country and document the plights of egg laying hens. And that won a number of awards at film festivals across the, the country. And now we are very soon to release a, a new documentary. It's called Farm to Fridge, and that covers the plights of all farmed animals, cows, pigs, chickens, uh, the, you name it. Um, I have a very brief part of that film to show to you today. It, again, it's called Farm to Fridge. Um, it'll be released very soon. It's narrated by James Cromwell. And um, this, this portion just focuses primarily on two aspects of modern animal agriculture, which would be the dairy industry and the egg industry. So if I can um, give me just a moment to get uh, uh, the helper here to get the video going and uh, we'll show that for you. Um, I, I hope you took our booklets, uh, Compassionate Choices. Um, if you haven't, there's some on the back of the table there. And if you have any questions after the film, feel free to come in and talk, chat with me. Thank you. Yeah. In the next few minutes, you will be given an eye-opening look behind the closed doors of modern farms, hatcheries, and slaughter plants, revealing the journey that animals make from farm to fridge. The practices you are about to see are not isolated incidents. They are largely standard, legal, and defended by the animal agribusiness industry. From the moment they hatch, the egg industry subjects chicks to horrors few of us can even imagine. At the hatchery, workers quickly and roughly sort the males from the females. Because male chicks don't lay eggs and do not grow quickly enough to be raised profitably for meat, they are killed within hours after hatching. Male chicks are typically thrown into giant grinding machines while still alive. This practice is deemed standard and acceptable by the egg industry. Another killing method is to drop male chicks into trash bags to be smothered or suffocated. More than 200 million unwanted male chicks are killed on their first day of life each year in the United States. The females have it even worse, destined for a life of prolonged cruelty. To reduce pecking induced by overcrowded living conditions, workers use a hot blade or laser to remove part of the chick's beaks. This mutilation can cause both acute and chronic pain. After the beating, the birds are moved to cages where they will spend the rest of their lives. Nearly 95% of egg-laying hens spend their lives confined in tiny wire cages like this. Most birds never see sunlight or breathe fresh air. They are packed so tightly they cannot even spread their wings, walk or turn around without pushing other birds aside. The harsh and unrelenting environment of the cage takes its toll, often leading to severe feather loss, open wounds, and birds trapped in cage wire. For many hens, the stressful confinement is too much, leading to premature death. Undercover investigations at egg farms from coast to coast have revealed a culture of cruelty and neglect, including workers stomping on birds, throwing live hens on dead piles and in trash cans, and painfully mangling bird spines in botched attempts to break their necks. At one or two years of age, when a hen's egg production begins to decline, she is violently ripped from her cage. Workers often fling the birds into metal carts where they are painfully suffocated with carbon dioxide. Cows produce milk for the same reasons that humans do, to nourish their young. 
but calves on dairy farms are dragged away from their mothers and violently killed, all so that humans can have the milk instead. The majority of today's dairy cows are confined on factory farms. Some spend almost their entire lives standing on concrete floors. Others are crammed into massive mud lots. Workers subject young cows to painful mutilations and amputations. Here, a worker cuts off a cow's tail, slicing through her sensitive skin, nerves, and bones without any painkillers. Another routine practice is dehorning, burning into the calves' skulls to remove their budding horns. Painkillers are rarely used. A 2010 undercover investigation at a dairy farm in Ohio revealed a farm worker stabbing cows with pitchforks, beating them in the head with crowbars, and punching baby calves. Injuries and illness often run rampant in filthy, disease-ridden factory farm environments. Cows too sick or injured to stand are called downers and are often left to slowly suffer and die from their injuries. At a fraction of their natural lifespan, the so-called spent dairy cows are prodded under transport trucks and shipped to slaughterhouses. An undercover investigation at a slaughterhouse in California revealed down dairy cows being kicked, shocked, pushed with forklifts, and water hosed in the mouth and nostrils in an effort to get them to the kill floor. Farmed animals are every bit as intelligent, curious, and capable of feeling pain and suffering as the dogs and cats so many of us know and love. If you are at all moved by this film, please do your part. Make a commitment today to explore a vegan diet. It could be one of the best decisions of your life. By withdrawing our support of this cruel and violent system, we can put our ethics on the table and make a statement for a kinder and more compassionate society for all animals. For delicious vegan recipes, nutritional information, and tips on making the transition to a plant-based diet, please visit chooseveg.com. What suffering is doing when people are not aware. So, thank you. And if you haven't picked up the pamphlet, uh, please do so as you go out. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, from you I receive, to you I give, together we share. And from this we live, from you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. Now we have last prayer. Shiva Master. Sarva Jagadaha Parahita Nirata Bhavantu Bhuta Gana Dosha Prayantu Nasham Sarvatra Sukhi Bhavantu Our prayer is Let the wings go to the universe and feel that the world will be blessed and have peace. Let everyone be engaged in one another's well-being. Let all the faults and weaknesses be evaporated and be vanished. Let everyone everywhere, be healthy, happy, peaceful, and blissful. Oh, peace, peace, peace. Let our presence be peace and experience peace 
and bring the vibrations of the peace to the suffering world. And that goes from our heart to the universe and comes back from the universe to enrich our heart. Om Shanti. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.